So I'm going to, we're going to talk about uh, what happens uh, uh, in, uh, in God's presence. And so we're going to, this 30 minutes, going to spend time in the word of God. It's, it's very important to, um, to spend in God's word. You know, most of the time when we talk about the presence of the Lord, um, sometimes we don't un really understand what happens in God's presence. God's presence is, uh, is so powerful that can change everything in your life. God's presence is uh, so powerful and sometimes people don't even understand what it really means. I've been privileged to walk with people that have walked with God's presence. Today I was listening to, to Dr. Ralph Wilkerson, who was the best friend of Pat Robinson. They talked on the phone almost every day. And all they talked was the presence of God and the power of God, what God is doing. And, uh, and I remember Ralph visiting me in my house many times. And this time it was on Christmas day they chose to come spend Christmas with me. Begin to tell me about uh, how Catherine Kuhlman practiced God's presence like every single time. She, she really meant what it really means to walk in God's presence. It, it's uh, and the importance of God's presence, how important God's presence is I've come to, in all these years that I've been walking with the Lord, uh, years has come, years has come to pass. I've come to realize that you can have all the church you need to have. You can have all the Bible studies you need to have, but without knowing the presence of God, you'd have lived your, li you'd have lived your life missing something. That's the presence of God. Um, I don't want you to live your life in vain without living your life with God's presence. And people do not, most of the churches today do not care about God's presence. For example, one day I was invited to one church. Um, the pastor gives me a mic. He says, uh, release whatever God has given you. Then immediately the healing power was present. Then when I called people on the word of knowledge to come and get healed, and these people were been in pain for years, even weeks. And that was just that opportunity. That was just that opportunity. Look, God is a variable all the time. God is always present, but there's a time when he's present to heal. In the scriptures, the Bible says, um, hey, let's look at it in the book of Matthew real quick. Hey, in the scriptures, it says his power was present to heal. Uh, that's Luke chapter 5, actually. Luke chapter 5, verse 17 says, The power of the Lord was present for Jesus to heal the sick. The power of God was present for Jesus to heal the sick. The power of God was present with Geshem Sikala when Jesus was working through him to heal the sick. There was that moment, I'm not comparing myself equal to Jesus, but I, I want you to understand the power of God is present with, with Nekomi to heal the sick. The power of God is present with Latoya to heal the sick. The power of God is present with Anna 
to heal the sick. The power of God is present with Angela to heal the sick. So the presence of God was so strong. I felt it so strong. It was a real glory that was present. Then the pastor takes away the, the mic and start doing his own thing. Then I said, this man has no respect for the presence of God at all. I just knelt down in reverence and asking for forgiveness, for being selfish, for people for being selfish, not meeting people's need in the presence of God when God was present. Because that type of power is not always present. It's a gift to heal. And those people, they might have gone to doctors to doctors. They may be not even sleeping. They may be in terrible pain. Some of them, they may even die because of pain. And this pastor never realized the damage it did to the people. And I walked out of that service. I snaked away. I've done that several times, by the way. I snaked out. I said, I don't want to be part of this. Uh, uh, I don't want to be the one part of this disobedient to the Holy Spirit. So I sneaked away. And I've done that several times. Even I was in another church to have 3,000 people. And I felt the Holy Spirit was grieved. I preached and I ran away because I didn't want to be part of disobedience. But I understand some of you may not understand what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is a fact. The presence of the Holy Spirit is a reality. And if you knew his reality, you will honor. I may not do everything perfect, but there's one thing I've always, I've always done well to honor God's presence and those that carry the presence of the Lord. And if people have a prophetic word, even if I'm preaching, they really are carrying the presence of the Lord for someone, I will not hinder them. I will help them to fulfill obedience because obedience to the Lord leads to greater increase of God's presence. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you know what? I'm glad you walked away because this ministry has no longevity. Anywhere where I'm not, I'm not honored, then there won't be a longevity of the ministry. Then I said, what about the people who are getting slain? They were getting slain by their own faith. They were, they, they, whatever was in the room was not, it was a, a smoke of my presence. It's called the lingering presence. I was there, but I was not there. It's like where you know that the fire has passed somewhere when the fire of God has passed somewhere, you can still smell the fire, but it doesn't mean the fire is there. And a lot of churches and a lot of individuals, they are just a smoke away because the fire of God has left them. They do not even know it. The presence of God is not a theory. It's not just a theory or just a teaching. It's a reality. God's presence is a reality. God's presence makes the Bible become so real. The presence of the Lord is so strong when you believe God's word, what it is. You just believe God's word. When you believe God's word, God's presence will become even stronger and stronger in your life. You know, the fact that you are, you have logged in today and, and you are watching online and some of you are going to watch later, you are hungry for the presence. It's, you know how to get hungry in the natural. But I pray that you will also get hungry in the spirit. The same way you fast for food. Oh, I need to eat my chicken or my beef or my salad or my scissors. 
things like that. I pray that you will have that same hunger for the Lord, that you begin to thirsty for him like never before you just begin to thirsty for his presence. When you begin to thirsty for God's presence, you'll be filled. You'll be filled. You will be filled. The presence of the Lord, it's so rich. The presence of the Lord, it's so powerful that that his presence will become such a reality in your life that brings the peace. Again, the presence of the Lord is not a theory. The presence of the Lord brings the fear of the Lord. The presence of the Lord Sometimes some of you feel alone and lonely, married, not married, there are times when you feel lonely, you feel alone, but I want you to know that when you learn to practice and experience the presence of God. Now, the presence of God, you must train yourself to knowing God's presence. Number one, by being hungry for the God's word. When you are hungry for God's word, your spirit begins to develop, begins to develop. But, but, you, but you have to understand it's like, uh, it's like working out in the gym. Every time you work out, you get used. You get used and you, you find that you didn't have muscles. Now you have muscles and you get used to look at it. Now there are spiritual muscles that you need to develop that inner man, that inner man needs the word of God, that inner man needs faith, that inner man needs faith. Faith, faith is a catalyst that makes the word of God work for you. Now, the word of God, when it becomes a reality in your life, it brings forth the power of God. And the power of God comes from his presence. So when we look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, it's a very powerful scripture. Let's look at uh, uh, let's look at Second Kings. Let's look at Second Kings chapter. Chapter six, verse seventeen. Here it says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Behold, the mountain was full of chariots, chariots of fire all around Elisha. People, I've had, I've had privileges in the presence of the Lord where God opens people's eyes and they begin to see the fire of God. Um, we, we have seen, I was in Dominican Republic in the Caribbean and I was having a meeting in the basketball stadium. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people physical fire of God's presence that came upon God's people that made them to kneel before the Lord. People were just kneeling 
before the Lord and surrendering themselves because the experience, I believe there were chariots of fire all around it. Now, you understand at the same time when I was in the Dominic, uh, uh, Dominican, there was witchcraft attack in my room almost every single night. Some kind of witches wanted to come and attack me. There was some kind of evil presence. All I could feel that evil presence that was trying to come against me and my time there. I mean, this is spiritually. In the natural, people were nice, but in the night, there was that spiritual attack. I remember the spiritual attack was so strong. And then I picked up the phone. I called my friend, Cindy Trim. Um, I said, Cindy, Cindy, can you, can you pray right now? Can you pray right now with me? So she started praying in tongues. I said, there's witchcraft here because she's from the Caribbean. So I thought, let me call Cindy Trim from the Caribbean. So she prayed. And we prayed together and we destroyed all the powers and the authority of demonic that was in the area. Uh, God's presence was, was so strong and so powerful during, during that, uh, that time. And the witchcraft never came back. And then the presence of God took, took over. Whatever God's presence takes over, there is something special that happens witchcraft cannot come near you so god's presence is also your protection god's presence is your protection against witchcraft and against powers of darkness and the the other thing that is important is that they thought elisha was alone because you don't see god's presence the servant of Elisha was afraid of the army that was marching, that was scary and threatening Elisha. But Elisha was not afraid because he knew that God's presence was with him. But the, but the young man he was with, he did not believe he was safe because there was no physical army. God's presence is unseen, but is a fact is with you. It's a reality is with you. God's presence is so powerful because it's, it is with you. He is with you. Then he prayed. And when he prayed, his eyes got opened. Let me tell you something. You do not have to understand everything that happens in the spirit. Your duty is to obey the Lord. When you obey the Lord, there is always a provision. Elijah, when he obeyed God, even if a Jezebel was against him, was, was after his life, even in the midst of the battle, God's presence was there. And God's, as a result of God's presence, the ravens, brought the fresh blade to Elisha when God's presence is present. Remember, he said, I hear God in the still voice, but he's not in the still voice. I hear God in the wind, but he's not in the wind. In other words, I was trying to describe that the presence of God, even if he's not in the wind, but he's here. Even if he's not in the still voice, but he's here. He was trying to describe that the presence of God was with him, was not even in the still voice, was not even in the wind, but the presence of God was with him. So you must understand that God's presence, you don't have to understand everything. Elisha did not understand. He says he's in the wind, but he's not in the wind. He's in the still voice, but he's not in the still voice. He did not understand it, but God's presence was with him. You, you must understand that God's presence, even if you don't understand it, it's present with you. God's power is present. Some people said, I need to understand my calling. You will never understand. I need to understand the power of God. You will never understand. 
your job is simply to obey. Like God is reading us to have our own building. We don't have all the monies that we need yet, but I mean, I just have to obey. And some of you is going to ask you and stretch you to give. You just have to obey. Do I have to understand? No. Do I have to understand everything? No. Do you have to understand? No. Elijah never understood. The young man wanted to understand. Elisha did not need a confirmation of anything. He knew that God's presence was with him, but he did it for the sake of the young man that his eyes was opened. There was a chariot of fire, which is God's presence. Remember, God's throne is, is surrounded by the chariots of fire. You know, and the word of the Lord came to Elisha, as long as you, you are obedient, God will supply to you. So there was this woman in the in, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 7 and 18, she had only little flowers and little oil. And she said to his children, let's eat so we can, uh, so we die. There is no solution. But, but she... But Elisha was the carrier of God's presence, and God's presence was in the house. Where there is God's presence, there is always a supply. It doesn't matter how little it is, there's always a multiplication. It doesn't matter how small the things that you are believing God for. Now we see how God supplied the oil. If the, she even went to borrow other vessels, open uh, other other bowl, big bowls and big dishes and big vessels and 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 the oil, no matter how big it was, the oil was poured into it and it was full. And and she he, she even borrowed from the neighbors. Please give me more vessels. Give me more more things. Give me small plates big plates and pots and everything we i just uh, the oil is here and the oil kept going why because of one act of obedient triggered uh, one act of god's or uh, uh, one act of obedience in the presence of god what happens in the presence of god there is increase that takes place other people would teach that there is a loss but what i see in scriptures that the, the whatever God's presence is present, there will always be increase. The giver is not, uh, let me say this, the gift does not only benefit the pastor or the church, it also benefits the giver. Oh, for absolutely. Whatever the giver is believing God for, God will meet the needs of the giver. The woman, she was giving a, a little flowers and, uh, and, and oil. A, she wanted to do a favor to a man of God, Elisha, so that he can eat something. I'm sure after running away from Jezebel and from miles and miles, he must have been exhausted without food and without. And she had little food that she wanted to eat just on her family. But the presence of God was there. The presence of God multiplied. Now she had food for the rest of our life, I believe. And the Bible says she sold that oil and she paid our debts. So not only did God supply a need, but also she was debt free. God is always leading you to the, to the road of freedom, not the road of slavery. The presence of God is a high opener that that brings you into God's presence so you can increase where you have stumbled, where God's presence is so powerful. I don't know any woman of God, I don't know any man who has succeeded beyond. I'm not talking about the worldly success that is mixed with it problem and suicide and for example the Getty family almost the whole entire family committed suicide but yet they are the one of the most 
wealthiest people on the planet Earth. That's not wealth. Wealth is children supposed to enjoy wealth, which means there was something wrong with the wealth, you know. But the wealth that God wants to bless you, he also wants to put upon you and he wants to put upon everybody that is around you. God's wealth is created in the presence. You know, until the Lord sends his land, you will not suffer. Do not suffer. He said, fix the meal. And, uh, you know, that's First Kings chapter 17, verse 7 and 16. There it says, as long as, until the Lord sends its land, you will not suffer. Remember, it was a drought that was caused by a man of God. The man of God caused the drought and he was the one to end the drought. I'm telling you like most of the problems that we face, they are caused by the church. They are caused by men and women of God. And we are the one to, to end the drought. We are the one to bring the rain of God's spirit. I believe that God wants to, to take us higher into his presence, into his glory, like we have never seen before. I really believe that God's glory cannot just be limited in the word glory. The word glory, it simply means Jesus, to see the face of God, Seeing the face of God is seeing the glory of God. So when people are calling glory nights, glory service, is Jesus being seen there because Jesus is the hope of glory. If whatever meetings are called glory, but Jesus is not seen, Jesus is not seen, then that's just a name, a theory. Remember, God's presence is not a fury. The name of Jesus is not fury. The word of God is not fury. These are facts. They are workable. They are applicable on our everyday lives. God's presence is present to meet our needs, spiritual needs. Our innermost being must be trained and developed to receive from things from above. But we must learn to be obedient to God's word and to God's voice. Because if you're not obedient to God's word and to God's voice, you cannot grow your anointing. The anointing can flow in the area because one or two people have been praying and fasting. For the sake of those that are releasing the anointing, it can affect the whole entire church, but doesn't mean you're anointed. It doesn't mean you are walking in revival. You know, true revival is when Jesus is made real in the hearts of people. True revival is when people are repenting and people are developing and people are growing. If people are, if there's no development, if there's no growth, if there's no salvation, there is no revival. There is only death. You know, the word revival, I don't like using it actually because it has lost meaning. It actually was started in the right way because it's when God came to bring to life that which the church has lost, which believers and brothers and sisters have, have, have lost in their spirit. The spirit of God comes to impact it back. It comes to, to touch us back, comes to give us love again. It comes to give us healing, deliverance, provision, and, 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 and the miraculous, and being conscious, conscious of heaven, that we're not just earthly people, we are also heavenly people. But also, we are not just looking forward to God to heaven as much as it is real, but, but we are bringing the reality of that heaven on our brothers and on our sisters here on earth. We are to bring heaven alive. God's presence is a catalyst to make God's word become the truth. Most people don't even believe God's word. This word, it will never fail when it is it's God's breath on it. It's God's life on it. But it will not work for you if 
you do not have the breath of God. The breath of God is from the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, to develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to develop the relationship with Jesus because you have never seen Jesus. You have never seen the Holy Spirit. It is unseen, but the Holy Spirit can be seen through, through, through Jesus. And the Father can be seen through Jesus. Everything can be seen through the eyes of Jesus. I'm telling you that we should be a New Testament believers that I have a better, a better agreement than the old, the old Testament. We are people, we are people of, we've been loved on. The Holy Spirit is not far away from us, is living inside us. The, the, the fact that the Holy Spirit is living inside you, that's the presence of God living inside you. And now your inside must begin to change. You must begin to have peace. You must begin to have joy. The presence of God in you activates God's presence. The Holy Spirit in you activates God's presence. God's presence becomes so real and the reality remember god's presence is not a theory god's presence is not just what we talk about it or try to make our ban about it or make our titles on it no it's a reality every one of you you are marked by god's presence every one of you have the mark of god's presence and god's presence is inside you and it is in the presence of god that god wants to speak to your innermost being. Your innermost being is that human spirit that God wants to have a relationship. And God wants you to deepen that inner man with God's word, with faith. That's how that inner man gets activated by the word of God and by having faith in the word of God and believing that God does miracles and believing that God does healing, believing that God does provide, believing that God does pro protect, you have to activate that innermost being because when you activate that innermost being, your spiritual ears will be activated to listen to the voice of God and your spiritual eyes will be activated to see what God is doing and your spiritual mind will be activated to think like Jesus, walk like Jesus. Let me tell you, we cannot undo God's power. We cannot undo God's blessings. We cannot undo the greatness of God. We need the mind of God, the mind of Christ to be expanded, God to increase our capacity to under his greatness to some people can't even under fame. Some people cannot even under a billion dollar cannot undo money. Why? Because they are the, the capacity, the capacity is not increased yet. They can't even under a thousand dollars. They will go crazy. But, but, but when God increases your capacity, in the presence of God, this is what happens. Your capacity of understanding is being simplified to simplicity. Your capacity of thinking for bigger things become smaller things and greater things become normal things. And the miraculous become a lifestyle. The abundance becomes the norm. But if we cannot have his mind, we can, we can be threatened by the abundance and by the miracles. I told you of this story of the man that I was preaching in Venice, California, a wonderful church, a friend of mine. And I was impacting the, the anointing for miracles. I said, you are in the service, you're going to receive miracles from God. As people received miracles on that first se session, this man walks out, you know, it, it's near Santa Monica, but the Venice there, Venice, California. So there's a lot of people outside. So there was a blind man and, and that same person who received the impartation, he says, let me practice what I received. He, he put hands on the blind and the blind was able to see. And that was marvelous. The, the, because there was an impartation 
in the presence of God, he received the gift of healing. As I released it, as I say, take it, he took it. When I say take it, you're taking something from what God has given me into the realm of the spirit. So he took it and he gave it to somebody else for their eyes to be open. But his capacity to under God's power and God's greatness was not yet developed. Immediately he started calling himself a pastor and a prophet. He started to police his wife. You must obey me. I'm a prophet, okay? You must obey me. I'm a pastor. Did you see? I opened the eyes of the blind. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? You have to believe in me. I mean, now I'm a messiah. You see? Look at what I did. He calls himself all those titles because he doesn't even understand what happens when the presence of the Lord is there. When God's presence is there. Miracles makes you weep. Miracles makes you cry because you are, you know, I know that God did it for my brother. God did it for my sister. That is not just a miracle. It's saving somebody's life. Somebody who is, who is in a cruciating pain. Somebody who, who is, does not even have medical or um, for medical, for finances to pay the medical bills. And, and he, he just keeps accumulating bills and bills because he needs to go to the doctor and get all these drugs to fix himself and all that and suddenly you are set free by the power of god that makes me weep and it encourages me let me tell you something what i do when i'm having a hard time we're not immune to a hard time or to sad thing to feel sad we're not immune to the to pain and all these things we're not immune even to sin we're not immune to all these things but when you're going through things like that what encourages me for me is when i start watching my old videos of god's power and i begin to weep i said wow what a powerful things but let me tell you what is powerful is is that the presence of god is so needed to take away your pain to take away your sadness the presence of god is there to lead you to jesus to say i repent the presence of god leads you to repentance what happens in the presence of god makes you repent makes you humble makes you know jesus even better makes you to love jesus even better but when the presence of God is not present, there is only the flesh presence, then it's because I told you that one time I walked out of the church because when I called, uh, God was healing people. God told me that there are people in pain, I want to heal them. And then the pastor comes and grabs the mic out of me and, and he does whatever he wants and then he wants to give me back the mic. I refused. I said, I did not say anything. I never offended him. I just said, I'm done. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Why did I do that? Because the one I love and the one that loves the people was grieved. And I needed to stand up for him. I said, no platform is greater than the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was packed with people, but who cares? The, it's not about the masses. It's about this one, the Holy Spirit that I love. After the muscles, after the masses have left, after the crowd has left, there's only one person who remains with me in my room who understands what I go through. The Holy Spirit is my comforter, is my hearer, is my oil, is my encouragement. And he was offended in that service and it was packed with an overflow room. I just walked out. I did not alarm anybody Worship was still going on, but the preacher was gone. Of course, I made an excuse. They said I needed to go. Please, can you just take over the service? And I never explained why. You don't have to explain everything that God is doing. You don't owe anybody an explanation. After all, people don't care. The only person that care is God. That's the one you owe an explanation. That's the one I adore. That's the one whom I preach huh. for. I live for. And when he's grieved, I'm also grieved. I need an explanation. That level of walking with God is every day practicing, knowing the heart of God, knowing the heart of God, knowing that God loves you. And you know what? The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of confusion. 
even if that pastor made a mistake, if he goes out to God and says, God, I'm sorry, he still forgives. He always forgives. He's so full of forgiveness, so full with grace. But if you want to increase your spiritual authority, be in obedience with God. That's the secret. If you want to increase in your spiritual authority, be obedient daughter and the son of God. You will have a greater spiritual authority. But if you want to have a weak spiritual authority, walk in disobedient you're still gonna feel the presence of god he loves you but your authority is very low but if you are you are you are, you are, you are obedient when god tells you to do something you do it obedience is the key i've seen people just by being obedient they buy homes by being obedient they start companies by being obedient they amount to millions and millions and billions of dollars the obedience is not for god obedience works for you for your protection for your promotion for your increase for your blessing god doesn't need to be a blessed pretty blessed god does not need to obey he is always kind he's perfect he is always truthful he's perfect he is always Wonderful Jesus is always wonderful, no matter what. He, sun come, rain, rain come, he's wonderful. He is a wonderful Jesus. His character is steadfast, fast, never is consistent, it never changes. His faithfulness never comes to an end. He is a solid lock, he will never be weak. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never deny you of his blessing. He will never deny you of, his, of what you ask him. You must never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. Never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit like what that pastor did. He went after his program and he totally had no value for the presence of God and what God was doing. He was just concerned about his own business. I pray that we will never be, you will never reach that level of being too familiar with God, that you cannot give him reverence of his presence, that you will know that God is not there to challenge you, is there to bless you. God is not there to force you to obey him, is there to fellowship with you. He is your fellowship. He is your love. He is your everything. Hallelujah. God is everything you ever prayed for. Everything you wanted to be. I'm Even in the midst of misunderstanding, he will, bring, he will bring clarity to your own life. He will bring favor to your own life. I've seen him open doors where man have not opened. I've seen God meet needs when I don't know how the needs can be met. I've seen God solve problems when I don't know how the problem will be solved. I've seen God change situation when I don't know how the situation will be changed. He is so mighty. Elijah knew him very well. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah and Elijah obeyed the Lord. Elijah obeyed. Yes, he was afraid of Jezebel, but he was not afraid to obey God. I, I'm telling you, you may be afraid of the economic system. You may be afraid of what's going on in your own family, maybe in your account, in your church, in, in your life, in your sons and daughters, whatever is going on. You may be afraid, but do not be afraid of obeying. Elijah was a man with, 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 with weakness and he was afraid with a lot of things, was running away from Jezebel, but he never disobeyed the Lord in the midst of that. You may have fear, but never fear the Lord. Never, never disobey the Lord because fear is temporal. Whatever you're going through is temporal. In the obedience, there is boldness. In the obedience, you become fearless. In the obedience, there is provision. In your obedience, 
there is protection. In your obedience, there is favor. In your obedience, you will have longevity of your life here on earth, saving Jesus for the rest of your life. And the presence of God is the gift of joy, is the gift of peace. I feel peace. I feel joy. I sleep good. I have joy, unspeakable joy. I receive hundreds and tens of prayer requests of people struggling, and I would weep for them because I would feel their struggle. Then after that, I would feel so much peace. And, uh, and today I was asking myself, say, how do I endure all these things? I, so, I carry so much for so many people, but I still don't feel bad in some. How is it possible? Then I realized that I cast all my burden on my yokes to him. He carries it for me. That's the joy of walking with God. He carries it for me. He is faithful. He is wonderful. There are times I feel like the ministry is clashing and I'm still happy and joyful because I don't feel I need to carry the burden. He carries it for me and the presence of God keeps mm -hmm. me into his, in, in his bubble, keeps me into his joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength uh, and, and, and it gives me confidence. It gives me faith. That's the presence of Jehovah God. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel like I want to start preaching again, but it's five o'clock already. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray that their homes will be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The presence of the Holy Spirit will be so real in everybody's home that the glory of God's presence will be so powerful and stronger than before. Lord, I just pray that we'll be sensitive to your voice, we'll be sensitive to your presence, that we'll be careful to take joy to obey you. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of freedom, the spirit of freedom. Lord, I remember on the June the 11th, I was holding a meeting in uh, Nipomo in Santa Maria. And the fire of God came on this day on June, June 11 on this day. And people were amazed at the power of God. They received calls from the neighbors and everywhere. So there is a fire going on there, but we were totally in darkness because when God spoke to me, we were meeting in a small church, about 80 people, 80 people, eight zero. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me, we need to move out of that church and find a bigger building. But everybody was saying, let's do it next week. Let's do it uh, in six months from now. Uh, some pastors said, hey, let's plan about the schedule. But the Holy Ghost was saying, do it now, do it now. Guess what? I said, we need to do it now. If, if some of you have seen a video, and, and I found a video actually, it was so cold that night. It was not a good day to have a service. It was so cold, freezing cold. Plus, we didn't have a venue, and we needed to, I needed to obey the Lord. So we went to a host lunch. My friend Pete Melanda and his wife, God bless them. I, I told them, I said, let's do this. God is speaking. He said, they said, Brother Geshem, we know you for many years. You have never failed us when you say God is speaking. Let's do it, prophet of God. I said, okay. So I had two obedient people, two obedient couple, but they owned a host lunch. And it was not even cleaned. Then I said, we have enough space for hundreds of people. I said, yeah, we have space but I wish we had more time to bring carpets and let them, I said, the Holy Spirit said now. So, uh, so, so, he, so he did what he can and he brought a truck 
they found, he lented a truck. He, thank God he used his own money. He lented a, thank God for obedience people. He lented a truck, a small truck as a stage. And people were just in a horse's drop. Guess what? We had over a thousand, 1,200 people showed up in the dark. There's a video there on Facebook and some of you, I can send it to you. It was people were just getting healed delivered that's how the, the the neighbors the neighbors started calling the chef department said please people are burning here people are in trouble here and they called 911 and the and the fire department came and when the police showed up and the chef showed up they found people were just crying and crying and weeping in the presence of god because the presence of god was so thick and so powerful, including in the air you breathe, you can feel Jesus in the air. You can feel Jesus. Even as you are breathing, you can feel Jesus. It was electric, it was powerful. Um, and, and there was a small carpet there that was put there. And, and, and I just said, whoever comes to this carpet, I stepped on it and said, whoever comes to this carpet is going to encounter God. And as they came on this carpet, people were just encountering God, being electrified by God. We saw, we saw kinds of creative miracles, including a Satanist got saved and got set free. In the video, it says, I know you did not come here for, the, for my meeting. You thought you came to my meeting to stop me, but you came to Jesus's meeting. There's a guy I laid hands there. He was a Satanist, but he's no longer in the presence of God. Lives changes in the presence of God. There is glory. There was no light. We didn't have lights. We didn't even have perfect mics because there was no time. Guess what? But God knew it was time. If we miss that time, try to create our own. Uh, revival then afterwards where people said oh let's lend a stadium let's lend a stadium and uh, there was some competition some churches they thought they were called for revival they were called for all that so they thought the revival is their name so they lented the stadium guess what the stadium was empty there were not even a thousand people I didn't even go to that revival because it wasn't God just did it for that moment. It didn't mean us to go to Atlanta Stadium and to Atlanta Stadium. So and I ran away. I went to Fresno. I went to Fresno. I I ran away a little bit. Uh, people said, "Where's the preacher? Where's the revivalist?" And now I was in Fresno, hanging out with people in Fresno. I'm glad I went to Fresno. That's why I met Nancy. And I'm glad, I'm glad I went there, um, you know, so, uh, and that's a story. And a lot of miracles were reported. And the eight police, over eight police officers were saved that night because when they saw something they have never seen in a normal church and everywhere, they knelt down and the police officers gave their lives to the Lord. That's what the presence of Jesus brings they came for trouble to solve the trouble but actually god came to arrest their souls and they got converted that night the police officers they got born again changed why because of the power of the presence of jesus it may not be that dramatic in your life like it could be just a simple whisper or just a breeze or just a gentle or just a peace whatever way it chooses those can create miracles being sensitive to the holy spirit to the presence of the god or the holy spirit to the presence of the holy spirit will lead your life to experience the miraculous and signs and wonders like you've never seen simply to be sensitive and obedient that's what happened people talk about the great miracle but they don't they didn't know the radical obedience to meet in a horse lunch and god moved on this day and we honor you holy spirit blessed holy spirit for those hundreds and hundreds 
of men and women and some of them became evangelists and pastors i pray that lord let that move continue to touch the whole world i don't even know how fight has gone because that's so many people our fight has multiplied through those lives lord i just pray that let your name be glorified i honor you lord and i pray for every person that that is on this call i pray that they will carry your presence they will do signs and wonders and miracles like they've never seen and i pray for those that are going to watch on youtube and Facebook, I pray for the miraculous. I pray for sensitivity. I pray for the fear of God to simply obey you, God. So much joy. And Lord, I pray for their finances right now as they gave. Lord, as we believe in you for our own building, we are believing you for our own His presence fire. Church, Lord, it is time to get looted and grounded to touch lives. I pray that you continue to speak to our hearts of men and women to stand with me in faith, in this radical faith that will bring revival fire all over the world. In the name of Jesus, you are their supply. You are their hero. I speak healing in their body. I speak favor in their lives speak protection over their lives in the mighty mighty name of jesus thank you lord amen wow hallelujah i feel the presence of the lord thank you father lord i just released the anointing upon angela i just released the anointing of god's presence god's glory over you and release the anointing, God's glory over Danny, over Kate, Lord. I release God's glory and God's power over Latoya, Lord. I release God's power and God's glory over Nadine. I release God's power and God's glory over Nikami. I release God's power and God's glory over Nancy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for your obedient daughters and sons I pray, cause them to operate on an open heaven. Wherever they go, miracles happen. Wherever they go, promotions happen. Wherever they go, provisions happen. Wherever they go, favor happen. Wherever they go, heaven is open. Angels are seen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I cover this word and I cover their spiritual ears and spiritual hearts with the power of the blood of Jesus and with a seal of the beloved Holy Spirit that is on earth. Beloved Holy Spirit that is on earth. Thank you, wonderful Jesus, for this glorious time. Amen. So God bless you, wonderful people. And uh, um, Thank you again for giving toward what I've asked the Lord to bless you. And thank you for being obedient for that and, and uh, continue to give and we will make it and you will be just fine in his presence and your finances will be just fine. And uh, keep giving and see what God is gonna do for you in Jesus name, in Jesus mighty name. Just say wonderful Jesus, I love you. Just tell him that, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, Jesus. I love you.